Next up in our afternoon tea series, we are talking all things cake. We have a delicious carrot and cardamom cake and also a beautiful lemon and lavender drizzle cake. We're starting off with a delicious carrot and cardamom cake. And what I absolutely love about this recipe, it's an all-in-one method. So it's very simple, very easy to make, um, and it's even gluten-free. So we're gonna start straight away by putting in our carrots. What I would say in relation to this cake is, when you are grating your carrots, use the large side of your grater because you want to have them chunky. We have some chopped walnuts going in here. Next in, we have some castor sugar some ground almonds. So this is where it's coming in the replacement of flour. The ground almonds is the base that's gonna bind this cake together. It's not a light fluffy carry cake, it's a, it's a heavy rich cake and it's, it's absolutely beautiful. Next we have a pinch of ground cardamom. This adds a beautiful floral note to the cake. It is quite strong, so don't put too much in. Eggs go straight in. One, two, three. Corn flour. And finally, we have some baking powder. So it's a tablespoon of baking powder. So as you can see, the hardest part about making this cake was actually weighing up the ingredients. Everything is in here and we mix it all together until it forms a lovely batter. And then we pour it into our lined baking tin. And this goes into a preheated oven at 165 for 30 minutes. Now, when the carrot cake is in the oven baking, I'm gonna make a really simple cream cheese buttercream. So we're starting off with some icing sugar and some room temperature unsalted butter. Again, if you don't have unsalted, you can use regular salted butter. And then a little dash of vanilla. And then we add the cream cheese in later. Sometimes if you add the cream cheese in the beginning, your mix can split. So it's better just to mix your butter, icing sugar and vanilla to begin with. That's it. So at this point, when your buttercream is soft and fluffy, we're going to add in our full fat cream cheese. And you don't want to over mix at this point. You want to mix it until it's combined and then it's ready to go. Beautiful. So that's our carrot cake ready. So we're just gonna pop this over here to cool down for 20 minutes or so. So when your carrot cake is completely cooled out of the oven, it has to be cold because if you put your buttercream frosting on top of the warm cake, it will melt. So leave it for a good 20, 25 minutes until it's cooled down. Um, for afternoon tea again, we're looking at nice bite-sized portions. So be cutting this nice small bites. But again, if you want something a little bit bigger, you can absolutely portion it to whatever size you want. Just clean off our knife each time so we have a nice clean cut. So we've cut that by six there. So I just want to lift up a slice to show you what it looks like. We've got that beautiful chunky nuts in there with our almonds and our carrots. So it's a real Moorish, super tasty cake. So we're going to turn this board around. And again, we're going to cut this into three. Again, we'll just clean off our knife. And then once this is portioned, it's ready then for decorating. So we have our cream cheese frosting here. Fill up our piping bag. Our piping bag is fitted with a small round nozzle. Again, this gives a really nice design. If you don't have a nozzle, that's fine, but it does give a more professional finish. So again, we're just going to squeeze this until it comes out and then we start to decorate. You can have any design that you want. This one is going to be garnished with some pistachios and some flowers, so you want to keep it as simple as you can. Some nice contrasting colours here, some beautiful chopped pistachios. This can be done and put into the fridge and kept in the fridge 
wrapped in a container for a few days, um, but just take it out and let it come to room temperature. Once your buttercream is soft, it's, it's perfect to serve. And then we have some calendula flowers. So we're just gonna pop on a few little petals. So again, these edible flowers add a beautiful color um, and flavor to the cake. Just make sure that the flowers that you're using are actually edible flowers, that they're not just ones picked from the garden. And once you have them all garnished up here, they're perfect to serve. What I love about this recipe is, again, you can tweak it and change it to suit yourself. If you're not a fan of chopped walnuts that's in here, you can change that and put in pecans. The pistachios on top, feel free to leave those out. You can garnish this with even a little bit of grated carrot is really nice as well. Once you get a nice contrasting color, I think that's the main thing. Really visual, really tasty. The perfect afternoon tea treat. Our second recipe that I have lined up is a delicious lemon and lavender drizzle cake. A very simple sponge and we're gonna get cracking on it straight away. We're gonna put in some room temperature unsalted butter. We have some caster sugar. This goes onto your mixer with the paddle attachment and you're going to mix that until it's really soft and creamy. So with any cake batter, it's important just to scrape down the sides of the bowl just to ensure that all of the butter and sugar is mixed thoroughly. So we'll mix that for another minute and then we'll add our eggs. So once this is mixed, add one egg at a time. We'll combine that. Once that's fully mixed together, we'll add in our second egg. When the first egg is incorporated in, we can add in the second egg. And then finally, our last egg goes in. And again, just mix that. Don't be afraid if you think that the mix has split a little bit. It's quite a high ratio of egg to butter. So once you add the flour, it will all combine together. Once our eggs are combined, we're going to add in our self-raising flour, which has been sieved. And finally, for flavor, we have zest off one lemon going in there as well. So put it back in, and once it's mixed, that you see no trace of any flour left, that's it ready to put into your tins. So our cake batter is ready. It is super soft, and it's got a beautiful shine. So we're going to fill our piping bag and we have these small, beautiful little sovereign molds. Now, if you don't have these, that's completely fine. You can use regular cupcake tins instead. These just give a lovely um, added effect to the cakes. But again, the small individual cupcake tins work just as good, if not better. And this recipe will do 12 of these mini cakes because it will spread when it's in the oven. So keep that in mind when you're piping it in. Now, so if you're using an older pan, for this recipe, you can grease it with uh, butter and dust it with flour, that will stop the cake from sticking. This is a new non-stick, so I don't need to grease it, but generally speaking, if it is an older tin, you can grease and flour the tin. And we're piping it in about to the halfway mark. This goes into a preheated oven and this bakes for about 15 minutes. While our lemon cakes are in the oven baking, I'm going to make a very simple but delicious soaking liquid. So that is going to be a lemon infused lavender syrup. So we're gonna add some water. And I'm gonna turn my heat on. To that then we have some fresh lemon juice, some sugar, and finally the secret ingredient, some beautiful dried lavender. So once all your ingredients are in here, bring it to the boil. Once it comes to the boil, switch it off and let it infuse for five to 10 minutes before you soak your cakes. So that's our lemon cakes just out of the oven. Let them rest in the tin for about five minutes before you remove them. And once they're a little bit cooled down after about five, we'll soak them in that delicious lemon and lavender syrup. So our soaking syrup has been sitting for about five minutes to infuse. The smell is absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful lemon and gorgeous lavender. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna strain this into our bowl to remove any of the little lavender petals. So your cakes have just come out of the oven, so they're still quite soft. So with a spoon, carefully drop one in at a time. 
you can turn it over and this is going to soak in all of that delicious um, soaking syrup. And then once it's soaked, we're just gonna pop it on our tray. You can actually bake these in the morning, but once your liquid is nice and hot, it'll still soak in really well to a, a sponge that has been baked a while. So you don't have to soak it straight away. If you don't get to it for a half an hour or so after it's baked, that's completely fine. Little tip, if you leave your soaking liquid to sit for five minutes or so and you find that it's gone a little bit cold, it does soak in better to the cakes once your liquid is warm. So you can reheat your soaking liquid if needs be. So now our cakes are soaked. They are ready to be filled. I'm gonna be filling them with beautifully fresh uh, raspberries and a little bit of lavender, but you can use buttercream, you can put in a lemon curd, you can even wait until they're completely cold and put in a whipped cream, um, or you can serve them just as is. Either way, again, as I said, with afternoon tea, it's nice to have them looking just as good as they're gonna taste. And then I have some fresh lavender, which you can just garnish on top. So once you've garnished with your beautiful fresh berries and some lavender, I'm gonna give these a generous dusting of icing sugar, just to finish them off. So these are our two delicious cakes for our afternoon tea section. We have the gorgeous carrot and cardamom cake with cream cheese buttercream and our delicious lemon lavender drizzle cakes.